Okay, welcome back. So this is part three of our look at Code Your Own Hero through uh, CS First, um, Google's education, their coding website. Um, we're gonna take things a step further in this part three video, but first, before we do that, I'm going to show you how to save your animation. So if you made the animation from part two, I realized at the end of it that I didn't show people how to save. Um, I'm not signed in and I don't have a Scratch account, um, and I'm not necessarily recommending you to make one uh, because it is gonna ask for some information, but um, there should be a way for you to save the work that you do, and there, there is, in fact. So up here at the top, I'm just gonna play my animation once again, see how it looks. Make sure it's what I want. There's a spin. Perfect, so I'm gonna reset that. And then up here at the top, I see File, and I can go to File, Save to your computer. And I'm on a Mac, so I see over here kind of an indicator that it's been downloaded, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm able to just click and hold, and I drag that onto my desktop. For you, if you're on a, a PC or a Chromebook, you might have to just go to your downloads and bring it to, let's say, your documents, an area that you're familiar with, so I'm gonna do that. And now I see it here, um, I see it here down at the bottom on my desktop, okay? This file will only be open now with Scratch. So if I, I'm gonna clear that. If I refresh this page, which I will do, and it's gonna say, are you sure you're gonna leave, you're gonna leave the page, you might lose what you have. I'm gonna say, yes, I'll leave. Okay, it's calling up a, a blank template. This is how it started again, if you remember. And all I have to do now is go file, load from your computer. And I'm looking for that code your hero, choose. It's gonna take a second and I'm back into my project. Okay, so that, that's an easy way for you to save your work at whatever stage you're at. Um, and you don't have to sign in necessarily and make an account or join Scratch. Uh, that's something that you, know, you might wanna talk to with, with your families at home and, and with your teacher. Um, but this is just a way to save your work so that you don't do something and then lose all of it. Okay, so that's what we did in part two. I'm going to move to a different tab here where I have things uh, similar, but I've made some small tweaks. Actually, first before I do that, I'm going to make the changes here so you can see what's, what's coming. So I have three sprites. Um, we know that this is our hero sprite here. I haven't really looked at the other two. First of all, there's a building. So I'm gonna to go to the buildings and I'm gonna to look to see if I go up here to costumes. Okay, now they're giving me all different types of costumes for buildings. So I actually want just a general house. So I'm gonna choose that. I can see it change in my canvas here. I'm gonna go back to code and then the star. Star is an interesting one. So I have a, a third sprite, but when I click on it, you'll notice I can't really see it. But if you look up here, you will notice kind of this outline. So the sprite is there. It's just right now, the way they have it set up, it's invisible. So if you go over here to the looks section, and if I make sure I'm on my star sprite and I click show, okay, now I see my star. But in this particular case, um, I don't want a star. So I'm gonna go again to costumes. I'm gonna go to my choose a costume. And I'm gonna to have to scroll a bit. Oh, I think I just passed what I'm using. Let's scroll up, there's quite a few. Okay, here's it. And there's the sprite I'm gonna use. And actually I can, I can resize uh, this character. So right now the size is 100. You know, if I go down to 50, I have quite a small character. Um, I think the way I have it set up, I have it at 70. Okay, and something I didn't know before, uh, and I am I am learning too as we as we go through this. Um, I'm trying to figure this out as we go. It's actually kind of neat to to work around with things and figure it out. Um, take a look at the X and Y axis as I click and hold on my character and move them to new locations. So if you're keeping your eyes here, you'll see that as I move the character to new spots on the canvas, the X and Y is actually changing. So if you remember last video, I was doing a lot of guesswork as to where I had to make my hero glide into. And I was kind of guessing the X and Y axis. 
you actually don't have to do that. So if I want my character to be right here, okay, I now have a starting point um, that when I reset my animation, I can put in a block that says go to x96, y negative 9, and my character will always go back to that location. Okay, so I'm just going to take you to what I have set up already. Okay, this part this part here should be very familiar. Um, this, this, all this block code here has to do with my hero character. Okay. Okay, there we go. All this block code has to do with my hero character. So again, when space is pressed, he's going to say hello. He's going to say I'm here to help. He's going to do his 360 turn. He's going to glide um, to the location, which is negative 2113. And he's going to say hop on. I also have my reset block here to put him back in this position. Right now he is at negative 150.89. The one new thing that I added on here, and I'm just going to separate it, is I added a new block that says glide for three seconds to 236 on the x-axis and 202 on the y-axis. Okay, So I wonder if I just click, or I'm going to, I'm going to run this, no I'm not going to run the whole thing because the animation will go, but I'm just going to move my character here. I'm going to click and move him. And I moved, I grabbed him just by his foot here and I started to move him off screen a little bit. But as long as I, I'm clicking on something still within the screen, I can still move him. Okay. And I just found a spot that I thought I wanted him to end off in. Okay. This right now says 256, 181. So I think it's supposed to be a little bit higher and a little bit over to the left. Okay, so somewhere around there is where I thought that's a good spot for him to end off. So I ended up putting in those coordinates, 236 and 202. I know it doesn't match exactly, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of, of what happened. And I put that on, and what you'll see is my character now after coming in and saying hop on, will go off to the top right of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that character. Okay, there he is reset. The building uh, the building level or layer, if you will, there's really nothing going on here. Uh, the building's not moving. I don't have any code for the building. It just has to be there. And then the last layer here is my character who's going to be saved. So I had to figure out a few things. Okay, the first thing I had to do was figure out where was I going to start this character. I didn't want the character to start out of, um, over here because, you know, they're not on the roof. And I didn't really like the look of that. I wanted my character to look as if they were kind of on the roof. So I found a spot, and the spot I found was x on the, on the x-axis 101 and on the y-axis negative 10. And if I reset, my character should go to that spot. And this is the spot I decided. Okay. I also didn't want my character to look like they were in front of the house. So if you think of all these three things as layers, right now, the background's the furthest thing back, then my hero is the next layer forward, my building is the next one forward, and this object is on top of all the other layers. Well, I want to move my object back, okay, I want to move my object back, because if I want my object to look like they're on the roof, and when they jump to my superhero, I want them to look almost like they're on his back. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my look, and I see an option here to go backwards two layers. Again, because I'm going back one, two. So I'm going to click on that, and what you should have seen is now the leg is not visible because it's actually that layer is now kind of nested behind the building layer. And it should be also behind the hero layer, even though they're not crossing over yet. Okay, so now I have my character in position. They're on the layer that I want them. I have a reset block, so anytime I click the flag, not only is my hero going to go back, but my um, person being saved is going to go back to their starting position. And I'm just going to separate these lines of code and try and go through them one at a time. Okay, so just give me a second to separate these. My canvas is nice and big, there we go. So the first thing I did is I said when space key is pressed. And the reason I did that 
is because my hero also moves when the space key is pressed. So I wanted to use the same button. When the space key is pressed, my character is going to go back two layers because sometimes when he resets, he jumps forward. So I want to make sure that happens. And then I'm going to have my character wait for eight seconds. Why am I going to have them wait? Because I need my hero to say their speech, do the spin and glide in. And if I go back, here's where a bit of the math comes in. I had to figure out how long I wanted. Sorry, I'm jumping here. I had to figure out how long I wanted this character to wait for. And I decided on eight seconds. Here's how I came up with that number. If I look at the hero level uh, layer, I see that there's two seconds to say hello, plus two seconds, that's four seconds. Okay, And then they glide for three seconds. So that's a total of seven. And then they start to say, sorry, they start to say hop on and they do that for three seconds. So I knew, and this, this was me kind of toying a little bit with it. I knew the character, this character had to wait at least seven or eight seconds. Okay, because two plus two is four plus another three for the glide is seven. So I knew that this character had to wait in place for at least eight seconds. Then after they wait, this character is going to glide. And this character is going to move right about here. And it's going to kind of look like um, he's on the hero's back. Okay, again, he's supposed to slide underneath. He's going to be behind this hero layer. And it should look like they're on, they're on, uh, that he's on his back. Okay, and then... The character is going to wait for one second and he's going to glide with the hero up to the top right corner. It took a little bit for me to figure out how many seconds to make my glide to have it look kind of smooth so that the two characters move together and one doesn't get left behind. Okay, And if I add up my second count here, so when space is pressed, 8 plus 2 plus 1, that's 11. Okay, so there's 11 seconds before the character is going to go up to the top right. I'm going to look at my first thing. That's 4 plus 3 plus another 3. So that's 10. Okay, there's 10 seconds before this character starts to move to the top right corner. But I've made up for that by making this character's glide a little bit quicker. Let's, let's look how it actually, how it actually appears and, and that might help um, for us to see what's going on. So I'm gonna click the space button. Right now, this character is just waiting for those uh, seven or eight seconds. Now the character is gonna appear to hop on. They're gonna wait and fly off together. Okay, and I can reset. Both my characters will reset to their main position. I'm going to do that one more time. Again, um, the character is going to wait for those eight seconds. And then they're going to glide. And then they're going to wait again and, and fly off with our hero. So both of, these, um, both of these sections of block code are now happening at the same time. Okay, when I hit the space bar. So here we go one more time. character glides for two seconds, they wait, and they fly off. Okay, and if you start to change values, here's where you can tweak things. If I told the character to glide after three seconds, or maybe even three and a half, so now I'm telling this character on the roof to glide, but to take longer to do that glide. Watch how it looks. Okay, so you start to see the characters getting left behind. Um, if I do it even longer, right, and I'm gonna reset this, I'm gonna run it one more time. So now the character on the roof is gonna jump onto the superhero, but they're gonna take a lot longer to do their glide here, and they look like essentially they're being left behind. So it took a bit for me to figure out the correct amount of seconds to make it almost look like um, 
the character being saved is on the hero's back, right? If I ended up doing it too quick, like if you said glide for one second, it's gonna look like the character isn't being saved at all, almost as if they save themselves. So they should move quicker now, right? That doesn't really look right. That's not what we're going for. So I think I had it at 2.7 seconds and uh, that, that worked for me. That seemed to be a really good fit um, where it kind of had the look that I was going for. You could always add something in. You could add a speech bubble at a certain point where the character says thank you. Um, this was just to show that, that last part I talked about in video two of uh, the character actually being saved by the hero and flying off screen. So now I have code for my superhero. I have code for my character. I have a background. I don't need any code for my building. This could be my whole project right here. And again, I would go through the process of saving it to your computer. Okay, I'm gonna see that, that new project and I'm gonna bring it down to my desktop. Uh, so part of the problem here they're telling me is a project with the same name already exists. So I didn't, I didn't change the name, which I should have, of the original project. And this is why you should always name things with original names. So it's asking me, do I want to keep both or do I want to replace? I'm going to actually go ahead and replace. And now I'm going to refresh this page, lose everything. Okay, and I should be able to load from my computer my project. And there I am. So if I wanted to, you know, on a new day, I'm just going to move that so we can see. Right, if I had enough for one day and on a new day I want to add more to this, more to this animation, or I'm working on a project and I want to do it in stages, you can always save it to your computer, load it back up, and kind of chip away at it bit by bit. So I hope you enjoyed this part three. And again, I encourage you to experiment a bit with Scratch. Uh, look online for other tutorials and um, whether they be video tutorials or sometimes uh, Scratch has its own uh, kind of forum where people work through issues together. Um, so I encourage you just to experiment a bit with the Scratch program.